This is the Regular Pastor Podcast, a podcast devoted to regular pastors and regular churches. My name is Landon Coleman. I'm a regular pastor here at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Odessa, Texas. You have found your way to season five of the Regular Pastor Podcast. Without question, the greatest season of all seasons on the greatest podcast of all time. Here in season five, I'm talking about books and ideas found in books and how those ideas and those books relate to the day-to-day ministry of regular pastors like me and probably like you. Uh, Today, I'm going to do something a little bit unusual, a little bit self-indulgent, I admit. I'm going to talk about a book that I have written. The book is titled The Basics of Baptism. The book is published by Regular Pastor Publishing. It comes in at 89 pages. Uh, On the front end, there are three notes, a note to pastors, a note to parents, and a note to children. And then there's 16 chapters that children are supposed to work through with their parents. And then at the end of the book, there's a final review. There's some answers to that review. There's some resources for parents, and there's a record for when a child is actually baptized. This book was published this year, 2024, uh, just released. It's available on Amazon, and uh, I'm just going to walk you through the book like I would walk through any other book here on the podcast. Let me start by telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a a graduate of West Texas A&M University. I have an accounting degree from WT. Uh, I am a two-time graduate of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, the flagship seminary of Southern Baptist in Louisville, Kentucky. I have a Master of Divinity in Christian Ministry, and I also have a Ph.D. in Evangelism and Church Growth. I've pastored three churches, uh, one in Kentucky, North Benson Baptist Church, one in Oklahoma, First Baptist Church of Kingfisher, and one here in the Republic of Texas, Emmanuel Baptist Church in Odessa. Uh, I've taught some classes for OBU and B.H. Carroll Theological Institute, uh, which is now merging with a sister school in Texas. Uh, Also done some teaching overseas for Kenya Baptist Theological College and uh, different places uh, working with reaching and teaching around the world, different uh, teaching sites. Uh, love teaching, love preaching. I'm married. I have four kids. Uh, one of the neat things about this book, The Basics of Baptism, is that my oldest daughter, Emma, helped with the illustrations. She drew all the pictures for this book, and uh, she did a great job. I'm thankful for her contribution. This is actually the fourth book that I've written. Uh, the first book I wrote is Pray Better, published by Rainer Publishing. Second book is Pastor to Pastor, also published by Rainer Publishing. Uh, Those two first books now belong to Regular Pastor Publishing. The third book I wrote, uh, actually co-wrote with my associate pastor, Corey Spear, here at Emmanuel. It's titled The Kings of Israel in Judah. It's a book based on a Wednesday night sermon series that we co-taught together. This fourth book, Basics of Baptism, came out uh, just a few months back. And I actually have a fifth book forthcoming It's titled Christmas with Isaiah, and I hope to have that released in time, obviously, for Christmas this year, 2024. Uh, Just a big idea summary of the book. I wrote this book for three audiences. Uh, Number one, I wrote it for pastors, regular pastors. I wanted to write a resource that regular pastors could give to parents in their church to help them walk their children through the basics of salvation and baptism and Christian discipleship. Secondly, I wrote this book for parents. Uh, I wanted parents to have a resource that would help them discern what I call in the book the four C's of conversion. Those four C's are comprehension, conviction, commitment, and church. And I explain in the, the letter to parents what what parents are really looking for when they're looking for these four C's. Lastly, I wrote this book, obviously, for kids. I wanted to have a guide to the gospel that did not aim for the minimum, but that encouraged children to open their Bibles and work with their parents through a process of learning and studying and reading the Scriptures, all moving forwards towards baptism and a life of following Jesus. So just a couple of important ideas 
that uh, you might want to know about this book. Most books on baptism for children say virtually nothing about the nation of Israel. And this is an odd thing to me. Uh, The story of Israel takes up two-thirds of the Bible. Uh, The story of Israel is where we find the Ten Commandments, and it's the Ten Commandments that help us see our need for a Savior. And so much of the story of Israel helps us to see the character of God and his promises to send a Messiah. I just think it's important that a book on baptism say something about uh, the story of Israel that makes up so much of Scripture. And so in this book, I talk about creation, and we talk about the fall, and we talk about the nation of Israel, and we talk about the exile of the people, and we talk about the promises that God gave his people for a Messiah. A second big important idea from this book is that uh, as you work through the material in the basics of baptism, there are a lot of gospel truths throughout the book, truths about God, about our sin, about Jesus, about salvation. There is one clear chapter specifically devoted to presenting the gospel to kids. Uh, That's the chapter on salvation that begins on page 57. And in this chapter, I talk about the gospel beginning with God and his character and his holiness, moving to the the fact that we're sinful people and that we have to acknowledge our sin and agree, agree with God about our sin. We have to confess our sin I talk about Jesus. Who is Jesus and what in the world did he do to save us? And then lastly, how do we respond to all of this gospel truth? And the biblical answer is we repent and we believe. That gospel message is the the gospel message for anyone and everyone who wants to come to faith in Jesus, children included. And so I haven't watered this down, but I have tried to make it clear for parents as they're working with their children. There is one specific chapter on baptism towards the end of the book, and I think it's important in a book titled The Basics of Baptism that you have a chapter about baptism. But I would point out to you, just as a third important idea here, that that chapter on baptism is followed by a chapter on the Lord's Supper, then a chapter on Christian maturity, then a chapter on the security of the believer. And the reason the chapter on baptism isn't last is that for the Christian, baptism isn't the end of anything. It's actually the beginning of everything. And I want children and parents to understand that the point of working through this book is not just to get your kid baptized and then move on with life, but it's to begin a life of following after Jesus. And that life of following after Jesus, of trusting in Jesus, begins with our baptism. If I had to share with you a a favorite quote from this book, I would probably pull it uh, from the note to pastors at the beginning, page six. Uh, Regular pastors, when you're working with parents and children, it's going to be really hard to determine when a child is ready to be baptized. Some kids are not ready, and uh, sometimes children wait too long, and you just try to have to discern Uh, when it's the right time to baptize a child. Uh, Sometimes parents will assume that if their kids have been asking questions, then of course they're ready to be baptized, and they want you to do it immediately without any sort of process to discern where the kid's at. Uh, This is challenging as a regular pastor. You sometimes have to delay parents and slow them down. It's hard for you as a regular pastor to discern who's really pushing for the baptism. Sometimes it's the kid who's just really eager to do it for whatever reason, but sometimes it's the parent or the grandparent who's pushing for baptism to happen. Regular pastors, sometimes when you talk to kids, they get nervous because you're an authority figure and they clam up and they don't say anything and the parents get embarrassed. But sometimes when you talk to kids, they won't shut up and they just keep talking and talking and they're trying to show off and they're excited about the things that they've learned. And really, my advice to a regular pastor is to remember this truth. The salvation of children is no different than the salvation of any sinner. 
any and all truth relating to soteriology applies to children just as much as it applies to teenagers, adults, and senior citizens. Regardless of someone's age, the salvation of a sinner is the sovereign work of God from beginning to end. God elects, calls, regenerates, converts, sanctifies, and glorifies. Regular pastors can't do any of those things. Parents can't do any of those things. Children can't do any of those things on their own. And this book certainly isn't a magic resource that will bring any of those things about. God's the one who saves from beginning to end. When it comes to ministry takeaway, I would just remind you, regular pastor, that your job is not doing all of the work of the ministry, but your job is to equip the saints that they might do the work of the ministry and build up the body of Christ. That's especially true for parents who have children who want to be baptized. Pastor, do not rob parents of their God-given responsibility to lead their children to faith. And pastors, encourage parents to do what God has called them to do in discipling their kids on the opposite side of their baptism. The only critique or criticism I have of this book, having written it, is that I think it would have been good to have more material about growing and maturing and discipleship. But at the end of the day, every book has a purpose, and that means every book has limits. And you can't say everything you might want to say about every topic or every issue. And so maybe that's a book to be written down the road, how parents can help their kids in a discipleship process and growing as followers of Jesus Christ. The last time I checked on Goodreads, the Basics of Baptism had a five-star rating, and that was because I was the only one who had rated this book. So you need to get on Goodreads and add your five stars to my five stars. Who should read this book? I think it's obvious based on what I've written and what I've shared in this podcast. Uh, Pastors, regular pastors, this is a resource for you. Parents, This is a book written to help you walk your children through the process of preparing for baptism. And children, this is a book for you, helping you to be ready uh, to understand the gospel, to respond to the gospel, to be baptized, and to begin your life of following after Jesus. Thanks for listening to the Regular Pastor Podcast, especially this unique, uh, self-indulgent episode where I talk about one of my own books. You can subscribe for weekly episodes on Podbean or iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening. Uh, Thanks in advance for leaving us an A-plus rating, five-star rating, uh, whatever that rating system looks like where you're listening. uh, Leave us something positive, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to do that. You can follow me online at regularpastor.com. You can find me on Goodreads by searching for Landon Coleman. You can find out what I'm reading, and I'd love to know what you're reading. If you have a book recommendation or a request, you want me to talk about a specific book here on the podcast, shoot me an email, landon at emmanuelodessa.com. Until next week, this is The Regular Pastor, out. Out.